you've seen this comment before. The brain needs animal fats. You've seen it in YouTube comments. You've seen it in Facebook comments. You've seen it on forums. Anywhere that someone's trying to rebut, anytime time like so, somebody makes a, a post about veganism and somebody's rebutting it, you see that said. I remember this one guy I knew some years back. The second that he and his wife went ex-vegan, um, he started posting that on Facebook. Everywhere I saw him posting about his new, it's like he has some epiphany of that phrase. The brain needs animal fat. The brain now. Where did he learn that? Why is that phrase so ubiquitous? Why does everybody say it um, like it's an epiphany to them? I think it's being fed to them, right? Now, is it true? Well, let's talk about that phrase for a second, right? The brain needs animal fat. Technically, the brain requires these acronym uh, chemical substances known as DHA and EPA, which are essential fatty acids, in order to function properly. If you don't have those things, you're going to be loopy and crazy. Um, and Or have poor brain function, or brain fog, or lethargy, things like that. You're going to have problems if you don't have the things in your brain. And are, are those animal fats? Yes, they are, DHA and EPA, right? They're, they're fats that animals create. Plants cannot create DHA and EPA. So... Um, so the phrase the the plant needs and the the brain needs sorry the phrase the brain needs animal fat right nutritionally the brain needs animal fat DHA and EPA now the body has some capability uh, we'll say a limited cap capability it's true the the brain has if you look it up in the research I mean sorry the body the body has a limited capability to convert plant uh, forms of essential fatty acids into the animal forms limited capability which is why some people do well on reasonably well uh, eating a vegan diet but the body has a limited capability which is why some people do poorly on a vegan diet okay do you get me now so and and what's to determine um whether you do well or poorly well it largely depends on your genetics i know a lot of people will say oh well if you do just eat this 100 percent pure fruitarian diet every single genetic problem in your body will just repair itself you just have to have faith and if it doesn't work like that it's just because you're not being clean and pure enough and da, 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 right so there is there's these like stupid explanations that don't ho hold up to um, what actually happens in the real world, which is that you're born with a with a certain body and you have to accept that. And yeah, there are some things you can change about it and some things you can improve. But if you're born with a zero percent ability to convert ALA to e to D DHA, and you eat whatever diet those people are telling you to eat, and that ability doesn't come back, you're always going to have a DHA deficiency. And you do a 40-day water fast three times or whatever they tell you to do, right? If none of that works, you're always going to have a DHA deficiency. So your brain is going to suffer, right? And now if you're one of the people who are lucky enough to be able to convert 7% of the ALA you consumed into DHA, right? Like I said, limited capability. That's about as high as it gets. If you're lucky enough to be one of those people with those genetics, that's great. So you're going to not have as many, you know, brain-related complaints after some years on a vegan diet as that other person. And But you're probably going to be an idiot and make fun of that person um, or say mean things to them on social media, right? <laughs> and by the way, I know there is a study showing that conversion to DHA, ALA to DHA conversion, goes up the less animal products that you consume. I know that. I've Trust me, I've reviewed uh, most of the relevant DHA-related studies, right? So I know what I'm talking about, right? Um, a lot of people see that and they just kind of... Uh, run with it right vegans will read that study they're like okay well that's everything's fine then that means anyone who's talking about dha is just complaining or making excuses because they think they think they can just kind of take the conclusion of that study and assume that anybody who's say you're born with a ability to convert one percent of the ala you consume into dha right and if you don't consume any animal products any any animal dha at all in your diet maybe that goes up to 3%, right? It doesn't mean that everybody can all of a sudden fully convert as much DHA as they need when they stop eating almond products. It just means that in general, on average, if somebody stops, uh, removes all animal source DHA from their diet, their body is usually going to increase the efficiency of the conversion from ALA to DHA. It doesn't mean that it's going to all of a sudden be sufficient. If for somebody who is insufficient, right, it might bring them to levels of sufficiency, it might not, right? Because you're still dealing with a very large range, especially in men, which have an even lower ability, and I have theories as to why that's the case. Um, but, um, uh, genetically men have less of an ability right so um, people people like to read it's kind of like uh somebody i know who i was i was talking about anti-nutrients in plants 
And they're like, well, I just, you know, Dr. Gregor, you know, there's a study that says that if you, your gut microbiome is healthy, it protects you from plant antinutrients. So, but they were just taking that and running with that and saying, basically assuming that you just don't have to worry about antinutrients at all whatsoever. Like they will have no effect on your health whatsoever as long as you have a healthy uh, gut biome. But that is not what those studies say at all. But be because people have religious beliefs in certain diets, they read a study and they just kind of interpret it in a very wild way. So it's like, oh, if you stop eating animal products, your body will just magically be able to convert all the DHA you need. So if you talk about DHA deficiency, you're just lying or anti-science. That's what they say, but that's not what the study says, right? Or you don't have to worry about the health effect of various plant anti-nutrients such as phytic acid, oxalic acid, beta carotene, um, uh, things like that. You don't have to worry about that at all as long as you have a healthy gut biome because I saw that in a study. The study did not say that. All right? Be very careful about these people and their studies. They they read what they they read what they want to believe. They interpret what they want to believe. They interpret what they want the study to say, even if it doesn't say that at all. So, but anyways, so when you see someone saying that phrase, uh, you know, the the body, the brain needs animal fat. The brain needs animal fat. It's been put there by gurus, right? Who either know what they're doing or have been like subtly fed that idea by the success they get from saying it. Because obviously, Google knows, YouTube, you know, all these tech companies, they put you at the spotlight. Even even before um, uh, things like shadow banning and stuff like that, even before that, you get to the top of the search results if, you know, the people who are writing the code for these things um, get paid by the industries to put you at the top. So obviously the idea that um, like this intense focus on the phrase their brain needs animal fats is a way for um, is a way to push people, health-minded people, um, to eat large amounts of animal fats when they when they are eating an, uh, a diet based on animal products. For example, the paleo diet, and especially for ex-vegans who are going to be looking for the most extreme, they're going to be looking for how to succeed. An ex-vegan is going to be specifically looking for tips on like how to be healthy on a meat-based diet, right? And that's the first thing they're going to find on the internet. The brain needs animal fats, which technically nutrit from an additional science standpoint technically that's true right but the reason it's pushed so much as a phrase is they know they know that it gets people to eat large consume large amounts of animal fats and not even consider that to be a bad thing because anyone someone says anytime someone says oh we did not really consume any significant amount of dairy or eggs before the younger dryas before ten thousand years ago that was when humans first started consuming those things in in large amounts um so why should it be a major part of their diet you know why do humans need to eat raw dairy raw dairy to get their calcium and make their bones strong why should it be an important part of our diet if we didn't consume it for hundreds of thousands of years and we obviously didn't need it right and if you say that if you question that and you say that they're going to come back at you with the the brain needs animal fats like this religious mantra you know a religious mantra about the brain needing animal fats as a way to excuse if you're eating animal products c to consume the highest fat diet you possibly can don't even care about it bacon uh, lots of bacon lots of eggs bulletproof coffee with like coconut oil and butter added to it or whatever um, uh, yeah it's a way to get people to not care about fat intake and do the thing that they know will get you to fail all right they know you will fail so when you're following the vegan gurus they're, they're giving you advice that's going to get a lot of people to fail. And when you go ex-vegan and start following the meat gurus on your YouTube, you can be darn sure, you can bet your britches, that they're going to be giving you advice that's going to help you to fail. Right, of course you're going to feel better short term, because you just fixed your zinc deficiency and your DHA deficiency, this and that. But in the long term, again, you're going to have health problems, right? So... I just got finished listening to uh, um, a testimony from about from uh, one of Dr. Smith's live streams, like last week, I think it was, um, where is this guy who did exactly what I keep talking about in my videos. He was a vegan and is, I think, was he into raw food? and, and But anyways, he, he said he, he ate lots of carrots and sweet potatoes and, and stuff like that, lots of very high beta carotene stuff. But anyways, he his health went downhill, so he decided to go ex-vegan, and right away he started looking for like the healthiest way to eat animal products. So that bright, brought him right to high fat. The brain needs animal fats. It brought him right to that mantra. It brought, it brought him to things like... Uh, lots of bacon and eggs and bulletproof coffee and liver, right? If you want to be a pleb, you know what a pleb is, right? It's like the great unwashed masses, like the peasants, the people who are very easily manipulated by the global elites. If you want to be a pleb, right, you just got to eat like a pleb.
pork, liver, eggs, and butter, right? Now, I know, of course, historically, the plebs would never get to eat food, food like that. You know, kings would get to eat organ meat, and then, of course, they would become very unhealthy. But whatever. It's not supposed to be historically accurate. It's just a cute acronym I figured out, right? Pork, liver, eggs, and butter. And that's what they're trying to get you to eat if you look at the, um, the gurus, like the animal food gurus on your YouTube. They want you to eat pork, liver, eggs, and butter. High in vitamin A, high in copper, high in fat, high in animal fats. And if you question butter, eating lots of butter and dairy, and just dairy in general, they're going to tell you, but the brain needs animal fat. They're going to give you that religious mantra, right? Now you know it's stupid. And now you know they're trying to get you to fail, whether they know it or not, right? So if you want to be a pleb, you should eat the things <laughs> that spell the word pleb, pork, liver, eggs, and butter, right? I remember this really loopy, uh, mentally ill girl on Facebook who was really super, 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 super raw fruitarian, prana, breatharian type person for years, years. It must have been five, ten years she was like that, posting incessantly about all this new agey fruitarian stuff. And then she goes to animal products. But of course, she does it in the same stupid way, right? So she's she's posting like, Raw liver is amazing, is the most nutritious food you can eat, and pork belly is divine bliss, right? Pork belly, right? Pork belly, maybe it's divine bliss, like like dr like doing drugs is divine bliss, and then you go straight to hell, right? If we eat liver, we eat pork belly, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. That's just the way it works. You're eating things that make your body suffer nutritionally, but you feel, you know, good at at first because there's lots of toxins in liver so and pork belly is lots of fat and lots of retinoic acid and you guys know about pigs right pigs don't sweat they store all their toxins in their fat they don't sweat they don't have that method of detoxification that that humans do they don't sweat through their skin that's why in the book of leviticus in the bible it says that you should not eat pork because pigs are an unclean animal well it turns out Nutritionally speaking, they actually are an, a very unclean animal. They store lots of toxins in their fat, right? So it's very stupid to eat pork. So yeah, pork, liver, eggs, and butter, that's what all the, uh, like, Sally Fallon type people on YouTube, right? If you, So if you're like that girl, you're like this stereotypical, like, new age hippie fruitarian, and then you go to eating meat, you and you do the same stupid things, it's going to lead you down the same stupid path, except in the animal diet world. You're going to be listening to, <laughs> like, the animal food version of, the animal product version of, like, Doug Graham and Lauren Lockman and Don and Bennett and all those people, right? Like, the gurus at the top who are allowed to be at the top for a reason, right? And so, anyways... Be careful what you, advice you follow and watch out for those mantras, right? Especially the, your brain needs animal fat mantra, which is repeated over and over again as a way to basically make people feel c comfortable with the idea of eating large amounts of animal fats because that they know that's how you will fail, right? Just like on a vegan diet or a raw vegan diet, if you eat lots and lots of plant fats, you're going to do poorly. And if you eat lots and lots of animal fats in an animal diet in the long term, you're also going to do poorly. And there are good reasons for that, which I've explained in other videos and will continue to explain in my future videos until everybody understands and agrees with me. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Or morning or daytime if you're listening to this in the morning. And make sure you check out uh, various websites that I may or may not be associated with, such as um, AmazonFruitFestival.com, LibertyHomesteads.com, fruithaven.org and uh, terrafruitist.com